Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, she's hot. Well, you can't run it like that. Oh, man. I think I put my balls. <laughs> man. Hello, people of the interwebs. This is Dan. Let's have a look at my burner 2.0 and see what this beast is all about. So, first of all, what are we running? We're running a 70 CFM ceiling fan. We're running a 100 pound propane bottle as the burner, a 30 pound propane bottle as a reservoir with some shit in between. Now, details. What does the burner put out? Well, on a low setting, which is it at idle and no forced air, we're running about 350 to 400 degrees Celsius. That is 750 or so degrees Fahrenheit. And when we put forced air onto the unit, we're running about 600 to 950 degrees Celsius. So up to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that being said, our fuel consumption of course is quite different so from half a gallon an hour up to well I think three gallons an hour we can run anything in between exhaust temperature ranges from 150 degrees Celsius to 350 degrees Celsius that is 302 degrees Fahrenheit to 662 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, the outside exhaust temperature is anywhere between 80 to 100 degrees, well, 110 degrees Celsius. I think 110 was the highest I measured. Here is an item list of the things that I used to build. A large 100 pound propane tank, the 30 pounder propane tank. We used a little bit of sheet metal, some stuff I had laying around, some square tubing I picked up at... Uh, metal place and uh, some angle iron, couple pipe fittings, pipes and a shot of valve uh, just to make the uh, legs, didn't use all of that um, I actually also used some uh, rebar to make a little bit of a, a ring for the bottle to sit in we also used some 5 inch steel pipe I'm not entirely sure what the wall thickness is, but it's less than a quarter inch anyways. We also used, of course, a ceiling fan, 70 CFM ceiling fan. We used some ducting, dryer hose, ducting crap, whatever it's called. Uh, just so we're modular on where we can put the air in. And um, yeah, of course, some stove pipe. So a couple ho homemade, self-made adapters and um, yeah probably like 10-15 feet worth of stovepipe. So the burner is self-feeding by means of a low pressure situation in the reservoir. So our oil level in the burner regulates how much air and therefore how much oil comes in from the reservoir. So air goes back in the pipe and that way it allows the reservoir to drain by gravity into the supply pipe and uh, replenish, refill the oil in the burner. Once the oil level reaches the top of the pipe, seals it off, stops the airflow, no oil can flow. So I got this little water dispenser here and uh, just to demonstrate for people that can't imagine how that works, but uh, that's basically the same idea. Or if you were to use like this bowl here. You put a sealed object in the center of it, fill it with water. You can actually pull the column of water up into the air because the vacuum in the reservoir and that is how the reservoir of the burner works. However, the supply pipe is not ideal to be using for that. I will have to add a secondary line that does the same thing but does not carry oil. That secondary line will have to go into the top of the reservoir so that um, it maintains that vacuum versus the supply line doing it. And then we have in the square tubing we have a whole bunch of holes that I just randomly drilled in and that is our air supply. And then the uh, secondary hole which is for startup and um, yeah just a non-forced air operation which is still above the level of the reservoir. So we can um, be sure that 
you know, just in case we are running the reservoir out of oil because of an air leak, it could fill up the entire burner. But see, the top of the reservoir is still below the uh, bottom of that secondary air intake. So we don't really care about that danger. So without forced air, the uh, secondary intake actually draws in a lot of good air. It burns really clean with the lid on. And um, it also draws in a draft through the center square tubing, adding to the quality of the burn. As a matter of fact, there are blue flames with the lid on. If you just lift off the top, you can kind of peek in there and you can see the uh, amazing burn. One of the drawbacks of this burner currently is because of how I'm running it, how safe it is, it leaves a lot of ash, a lot of unburned or a lot of carbon in the bottom. So after six hours it leaves about a dustpan full of ash which is a lot. With gear oil it's even worse but um, that is something that can easily be circumvented by injecting oil. So that is gonna happen with a drip pipe that's still in the works. So the burner can be operated multiple ways and all of them are going to be safe and the one to fall back to where if you have to go in a hurry, you close everything off, you take off the forced air, you shut everything down, and you just let her rip by, by itself. And that still runs 400 degrees Celsius.